another one with three pages of symptoms, but primarily numbness in the right side of the face. Right eye will go blind and then come back, seems to be positional. Uh, there is a lesion in the brain that is difficult to diagnose. They, they're just monitoring it. Uh, don't really know what to do with that. Uh, and this has been going on for how many years? Since 2018. 2018, okay. So let's go ahead and show what the imaging starts. So we're gonna start with somebody else just to give you uh, some anatomical understanding. So there's the jaw, we remove the jaw. I call your attention to the front part of the skull here. This is this is another, per actually this guy was scanned uh, yesterday. There's his jugular vein, there's an internal parotid. This is where the styloid process, or actually the styloid ligament attaches. He has not had a styloidectomy. This is normal anatomy for him. Uh, you'll notice that there's nothing here, no big giant tusk or anything. This is normal, no entrapment. He had other problems, but he didn't have this problem. Now, uh, well, we might as well go, since we just alluded to that, let's, let's go to the front here. And you have these big giant styloids that have been growing for decades. And the way your anatomy is, that as soon as that styloid, even when it was up in here, whenever you were bringing your head down, it would start interfering with your blood flow. Uh, and you have to sleep with a collar because otherwise you sleep with your chin down. You have a natural tendency to bring your head down while you sleep. And you've even noticed that you have to sleep in a plastic collar to keep your head up. Otherwise your symptoms are really incredible. And you've gone to so many doctors that you've lost track and they say you just need medication and you need this or you need antidepressants. And uh, anyway, what these styles have been growing for so long on both sides. Uh, this one entraps the internal carotid, which is the chief blood supply into the head, uh, pretty quickly. Here you can see it. So when you bring your head down, even a little bit. Now, we did a uh, Doppler on you today. And even when you brought your head down 10 degrees, the slightest uh, decrease, this jugular dropped to 50%. And then when you came down to about 20, 20 degrees, it dropped to where if you came any further, I wouldn't be able to detect it anymore. Uh, so this one entraps pretty quickly. Now the other one didn't entrap, entrap that quickly. When you had your head all the way down, it, it shut it down pretty good. But there was some, there was a little more, uh, there was a lot more actually a very uh, latitude given to you here. And the internal carotid on there does not get entrapped. Um, so that's the vascular component of that. Uh, here is another anatomical an anatomy book. Uh, and this internal carotid has a plexus around it. So keep in mind that oh, there's the styloid that this particular uh, anatomy book is based on. And you can see how it came down like that. Yours, yours comes across the internal jugular, internal carotid, and all these plexus of nerves, all these nerves, plexus. Uh, those nerves are the, the superior cervical ganglion, which is a sympathetic ganglion, internal carotid plexus, pharyngeal branch of the vagus, glossopharyngeal nerve, spinal accessory nerve, anterior ramus of the first cervical nerve, the hypoglossal nerve, the stylopharyngeal branch of the, of the glossopharyngeal nerve, the carotid sinus nerve, the carotid body branch of the vagus nerve, and the jugular nerve. Uh, so there's gonna be an irritation of those nerves in here. Um, now they're doing, they're experimenting with, experimenting, uh, I shouldn't say experiment, they're, they're doing stellate ganglion blocks for post-traumatic stress disorders down here and having great, great results because they're, the sympathetic nervous system is being stuck into an overdrive, turns off, overrides the parasympathetic, the person's in a fight or flight all the time. Well, guess what? You have that styloid coming across here with all those nerves, uh, sympathetic, lots of them are sympathetic in nature. Uh, you're gonna be stuck in a fight or flight and you get in front of the wrong doctor or group of doctors and they're gonna, especially since you're a female, you know how, they're gonna, you know how they treat you, gaslighting and, and the such. Okay, uh, so we have all these nerves, this artery, this vein. We're done with this. Uh, there you see them in all their glory. Now, when we have somebody like this, what, what are the sequelae? What, what do we look for? Well, well, one of the things that happens is that people get AV fistulas. 
Uh, that's where the connection between the artery and the vein breaks and the high pressure artery is able to inflate the, the vein and that causes a whole list of symptoms. Uh, so one of the things that need to be checked at some point uh, once the stylids are removed um, is for an AV fistula. Another thing obviously is CSF leaks. When you have backup pressure like this, now you say CSF, CSF leaks out of which ear? Left ear. Out of the left ear, okay. Um, and you've had doctors say that that's not CSF. But no, they said it's shower water. Even though, okay. But I, they never looked in my ear either. They didn't look in your ear, they just tell you that's no. what it is. Okay, well, okay. All right, so we think CSF leaks, we think AV fistula. There's lots of things that could be happening because of that. Now, you just got genetically tested for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and that was brilliant that we did that. Please stay on the screen. Um, let me bring up something else here. Whoops, okay. We're not gonna use that screen at all. We're just gonna stay on this one. Okay, so Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, connective tissue disorder, the dura can be thin on some people. Heck, just the traumas that you've had could cause a thin dura here and there. Um, you've already had experiences to where you know your connective tissue is a little hypermobile or not as sturdy or, or robust as, as others. Uh, we don't need to get into that. You're not, I wouldn't say you're double jointed, but you are very flexible. Okay, so that's gonna be, we're gonna send you to a doctor that's going to remove your styloids. You'll be checked for some for CSF leaks. You'll be checked for an AV fistula. Now, I am a chiropractor, uh, and when I see something crooked like this, I want to investigate that. Um, I'm an atlas orthogonist, so we've adjusted the atlases and set people free and been heroes. And sometimes we adjust somebody's atlas and nothing happens. And that's kind of why we're doing all this imaging and really trying to find help for the rest of the people. Uh, so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look and see how you, you kind of go crooked here and then the atlas is trying to accommodate for that. Um, now we did do a deep dive down in here to see what's happening there and I got some great stills. Let's bring that, those still images up. Um, there's your styloids. There you go. Uh, well, we'll skip that. Right, this is the venous phase, so we're seeing a lot of venous congestion because you're not draining correctly. Uh, that's what you would expect. You know, we didn't really go into the venous phase too much. Uh, yeah, with left and right head rotation, when you turn your head to the left, this lamina does seem to tuck up underneath there. Possible point of a CSF leak. Uh, if there's a, the dura might be getting beat up there. Um, we did look to see how far your atlas is rotating or tilting when with rotation. Uh, actually, this particular one was really demonstrating that uh, where that lamina tucks up underneath over the left rotation, the lamina is pretty much touching there in neutral position, and then when you turn your head to the right, the lamina pulls back out. Uh, so that's a great location to possibly be leaking CSF. Uh, possible location of an AV fistula. How much the atlas rotates to the right when you turn your head to the left, and vice versa. Right, so this is, this is the articular pillars on the left side versus the right side. Now, I'm gonna say you were born with an anatomical variant here that the, you can even see that the, the width of this articular pillar is not as wide as it is on the opposite side. So here we see this facet, uh, this articular pillar sliding posterior off of this. So you can see that big distance. And, on the, and that's what it looks like on the other side. So that's where your tilt is. Your, your telescopic end and tilting to the right. Uh, now this one below uh, is actually where it was fused. So this one, it, this facet uh, joint articular pillar is fused. Well, the front the front is fused, but the vertebra is fused in, a, in this particular position. So we'll have your surgeon reevaluate this. Maybe he wants to, if it's even possible, to fuse you in a straighter position than that. But the one above is doing the same darn thing. It's not fused. Um, so we're going to work on straightening that up. And my sense is that once the styloid gets removed from the right side, your neck will probably straighten right up. Um, and that's probably why he wasn't able to straighten you up to begin with and, and fuse you in a better position. Uh, 
this is a line we drew through the frame and magnum. Looking down, and I, I care about the atlas. Here, it is. here you can see that the atlas has gone up to the left, and it's actually rotating anterior on the left, uh, and trapping that jugular. We adjusted you for that today. How do you feel? Better. Better. My head feels clearer. Good. Not as heavy. All right. So we probably moved it a millimeter or two, and you're just any little breath of fresh air. Your anything helps. Um, and once your stylings are removed, you won't be so. Anyway, your life will be set free in a beautiful way. Uh, actually, that that's a well, let's dovetail onto that. So we just saw from that CT scan that there's the arterial phase. Now on X-ray, uh, these are the atlas orthogonal uh, X-rays, and when we measure you, uh, it looks like we should adjust you from the right. Actually, the measurements would say adjust from the right, but because we know about the, that articular pillar. Um, aberrancy and what we saw with the CT scan we adjusted you from the left today which would not make any sense to anybody in my field unless they had the scans that we saw um, okay oh uh, the ultrasounds well yeah we did talk about how the ultrasound Jerry Springer head down um, made a significant difference pretty quickly on the blood flow anything else you want to talk me to talk about any questions you have 